So IgM demyelinating neuropathy is a rare but well-recognized condition uh, related to both Waldens from macroglobulinemia and IgM and MGUS. Uh, and it's due to the targeting of the IgM antibody, monoclonal antibody, against something called myelin-associated like protein, which is found on the so-called myelin sheets or insulation of nerves, large fiber nerves. And this, this myelin sheet helps to make conduction efficient and rapid. And when the antibody um, attacks this protein, um, it leads to a widening of the myelin so that conduction down the nerve fiber is um, limited and undermined. Now, this can cause a range of symptoms, but they're usually relatively typical in the anti-mag uh, setting where people develop a distal sensory predominant ataxic neuropathy. And it typically develops over many years. So it can creep up on the patient and, and the doctor, actually. And because there are many other causes of IgM or of, of uh, peripheral neuropathy, people think of the more common things. It depends really who the patient is seen by, uh, whether they have a specialization in this area. Uh, and over time, you know, a significant number of people can become disabled. So it, it's worth picking out and if there is an association between demyelinating neuropathy and uh, the actual underlying condition, WM, it is worth making that connection because one can uh, give treatments to help counteract the damage that is happening. Um, equally, it is worth excluding a, link, a connection if that is the case, because neuropathy is common. And if there is another cause, then it is best to avoid uh, treatments, which are typically somewhat immunosuppressive. Uh, so the way we tend to treat it, our first line is the anti-CD20 antibody rituximab. There were a couple of trials, randomized control trials actually done in the past, um, which were actually negative uh, based on outcome measures. But on reflection, um, and what has followed in practice, is that there is, there was and is felt to be some benefit to some patients when rituximab is used. And um, one of the reasons that these trials were negative is because the outcome measures used were not really fit for purpose. And so a lot of work has gone into that and is going into that to try and develop um, practical outcome measures to use in the clinic uh, so that we can test whether people are responding well to the treatments. So based on this, I mean, and, and this ongoing work, we, we, we do use rituximab frontline, uh, and our approach is to give four weekly uh, infusions of rituximab. And bear in mind that it takes three to six months for the effect of rituximab to be uh, noticed or to kick in in terms of neurological improvements. And quite often there is no substantial improvement, but there may be a stabilization and that may be the best one can get. There is some thought about retreating rituximab if it has worked, perhaps at six or 12 months. Uh, and we do this, do this in some of our patients, um, but I have to say it's not based on solid trial evidence. Um, and, you know, ideally it would be good to continue to measure the utility of, of agents such as rituximab in this setting going forwards. If there's no benefit from rituximab, uh, then, and one is convinced that this is an anti-mag or demyelinating neuropathy secondary to the IgM problem, uh, there are alternative agents that are being reported increasingly, such as the BTK uh, inhibitors. Uh, and yes, you know, reports do show that there is some benefit to these approaches, but it's by no means a kind of cut and dried um, effect. It very much depends when the patient's diagnosed, how much neuropathy they have already established. It also depends on whether the person has underlying WM in their bone marrow, in other words, a substantial burden of disease, or whether it's more like a monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance, because in this situation, it is preferable to avoid 
committing the patient to a BTK inhibitor because that's a long-term continuous treatment. So really, in summary, um, rituximab still remains the mainstay of treating demyelinating neuropathies, but a lot of work needs to be done to develop this further.